Yes, sir. So far away. Hey. So, <laughs> SB3 of uh, True Hill Heat, with your relationship with Orange Cassidy and what he's done with the international championship and elevating it to the status that it is, and people talking about it main eventing all out, do you feel any pressure on yourself as TBS championship to echo that same type of you know status that he's elevated the international title to? I think it's, uh, I mean, it's so inspiring, and I think anyone who ever becomes a champion would want to kind of aspire to have a reign similar to, to what he's done, which is just incredible. Um, but I also think it's important that we all make our title reigns our own. So I'm just trying to live up to my own expectations. I can't replicate anybody else, and he is one of my best friends. Uh, so I'm just proud of him for what he's done. and. Uh, of course, I want. I can only dream to be half the champion that he's been, but um, I also need to be my own champion. So, well, speaking of being champion, you know, you won the TBS championship. Tell me a little bit about your road back from recovery. What does it mean to you to have the TBS championship and to be following up somebody like Jade, who was undefeated for that long, and now to be carrying and having your own run with that? Belt? Yeah, uh, the the road to recovery was terrible. Uh, having to do it twice was awful. Um, but it did kind of make getting to this point so much more worth it because it did just it kept felt like feel like it kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back and then eventually it was just like I'm not waiting anymore I'm going for it right now and then I I got it done finally and that was such a rewarding thing and um, I as I of course Jade incredible person incredible champion I will always give credit where credit is due uh, she's such a star and I, I can't try and live up to, again, like I was saying with Orange, I can't try and live up to her title reign. I have to try and make this my own. And I can only just hope to be just as dominant, if not more. But I, you know, every, every champion has their own title reign. And uh, every champion is different. Every person is different. Every wrestler is different. And I think that's what makes everything so unique so it's not just about living up to a previous reign it's about like i said making it the best reign that you can as yourself um zach hadorn from scscoops.com this time of year i think mark's kind of like you know an anniversary of AEW of sorts and you've been around from the very beginning with a long history of working independence. I mean, talk a little bit about, like, throughout your time in AEW, transitioning from a wrestler working on, you know, in different independent shows to working one national, you know, wrestling show, week in and week out, episodic in, in nature. Yeah, uh, you, you would think that it would be different, um, but the only difference is that there's a lot more eyes on you each and every week, and you have to remember that because you have a much larger audience when you get on television, uh, you have a lot more of a standard to uphold yourself to, and uh, you have to really focus on putting the pro in professional wrestler, I feel. Um, the schedule is just as much of a nightmare mm -hmm. as any <laughs> wrestling schedule is once you are getting more comfortable and getting out there a little bit more, um, except... Yeah, this time you have a lot more of a public eye on you. So sure. uh, I, I think it was pro kind of an easy transition going from the indies because I was doing so much to AEW. Um, it's just, uh, you know, you have, you're on a much stricter time constraint sure. also with having limited television time. Uh, but I do think that... Uh, like just from a character perspective and how you like work oh, out there does that yes. does that change like working like you know show to show town to town as it does you know big platform um i try and just make each each week that i travel and each thing that i do i try and make it a, the best version of myself and i try and improve on it a little bit more each and every week and obviously not all of us can be used and seen every week but that doesn't mean that you can't find ways to better yourself so i think it's all about Constantly trying to find ways to improve, not just as a person, but as a performer, as a champion. Um, yeah, and I, you, you, with wrestling, there's no limit to how much you can learn. So I think it's very important to constantly keep trying to perfect your craft. Just 
you know, it's just something that you got to just keep going and keep doing and everyone finds their groove at some point and hopefully their groove takes you to a big stage like AEW. Great, Chris thank Joe. you. Sorry. Oh, no. uh, Chris Joe with G Wrestling Headlines, how are you? Hello. Um, uh, I was in uh, Vegas for Double or Nothing for your big title win, congratulations. Uh, a few you. weeks ago, speaking of talking about TV time, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago you had this uh, great promo on AEW television where I believe you were squatting or benching uh, Renee. Squatting Renee, yes. Squatting Renee, <laughs> yes. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Was that something a spur of the moment? And regardless, uh, how was it squatting Renee? Did you throw your back out at all? Or? No, no. Uh, I'm, I'm so jacked. It's, it's fine. Uh, it, was, it wasn't spur of the moment, but it was something that when I was like, okay, I have to do this promo and talk about my match coming up. Uh, I just wanted to do something different. So I asked with Renee first. Uh, I was like, hey, do you mind if I squat you in my promo? And she was totally fine with it. So, uh, you know, we just we just went with it. And um, it, it got the reaction I wanted it to. So I am not mad about it. But no, uh, I am a professional. I, I'm so jacked. I wouldn't <laughs> squat someone for a promo if I, if I could handle it. So... So you talk about uh, cementing your title reign and what you want you want to have as TVS champion. You know, we just saw a new women's champion get crowned at All In with Soraya. What are your thoughts on her being champ, and what do you think about trying to do the champ champ thing and face her as well? Um, I mean, I, I think anyone that overcomes something that she has, such as her neck injury, and makes a triumphant return to wrestling is extremely commendable. Uh, I we we are getting a little bit of a taste tomorrow night on Collision with this uh, six man tag that we're doing with me, Britt, and Cheetah against the Outcasts. So we are getting a little bit of a taste of a champ versus champ type thing. And who knows? I don't. I think it might have been done in other scenarios, but uh, I think this is a first for the women's division, seeing t both champions in the ring at the same time. So who knows where it'll lead. It's gonna be fun to give everyone a little bit of a taste of that though. So we'll see who comes out the better champion at the end of it. So we got an interview with Jade saying that she's coming back for her title. Do you have anything to say about that? When she's ready, uh, I'm ready to give her the opportunity to come after it again. Um, I understand that everyone is kind of a, it's, it's a very 50-50 split on my, my win. Um, and if she wants to come back and come for it again, I'm ready for her whenever she's ready for it. And I am ready to prove that my win over her was not just a fluke and that I actually am the champion. So whenever she's ready, I am ready for her. Couple more guys. Uh, Chris, you've wrestled uh, a number of different talents in AEW, from yes. uh, from Jade to Britt Baker at uh, All Out mm -hmm. uh, to Layla Hirsch. Uh, is there a match in your time in AEW that you, you think fondly of? Um, the the match with Britt Baker is a very I'm very proud of that. Even though I did not come out victorious that time, uh, that was I think the the emotion and the energy around that day. Um, there's just something about that pay-per-view that just everyone was just buzzing the entire time and it was one of the most like feel-good days that we've all had and it was just it was just a very exciting time for all of us and um, I was so grateful to be a part of it and to be one of the people that we I think we all of us the whole roster everyone that was on that show we all stepped up and we really put on quite an unforgettable show because I know that's one of the pay-per-views that's constantly brought up as like being one of AEW's best and I'm just so glad that I have my, my name stamped on there. Um, I'm also very proud of uh, my my very first main event match with Ruby Soho in Las Vegas, where, um, I, again, I didn't win. I'm very proud of matches that I can't win, apparently. Uh, but I, I'm so proud of that match because, again, that one felt like a, a turning point for me almost. That's when I felt like people really saw me as a future champion and I um there's kind of a switch in everyone's feelings towards me and unfortunately not long after that I blew out my knee again or my other knee I should say uh but I feel like that was a turning point that led to me getting to here so hopefully after this match on Sunday with Ruby uh I will be proud of that match for finally beating her and I will be proud of a match that I've won <laughs> so 
do you feel like all the turmoil that we've seen with the outcasts as you go into this match, do you how much do you think that's gonna factor into this match? I, I'm 50-50 about it because we have to see what plays out tomorrow with uh, with this tag match where they're all going to be on the same team together. We'll see if they can get it together, if they can all join for a common enemy, which happens to be me, unfortunately. Um, I will see. I think depending on how it goes tomorrow for Collision, it will kind of set the tone for what happens Sunday. Um, it's up to Ruby whether she wants to include Tony and Soraya to be out there with her for our title match. That's up to her. Um, and uh, it could be a huge factor if they decide to be out there. If they decide not to be, that could also change the whole course of things. So we'll have to see. I feel really bad because I see the reflection just like flashing in your guys' <laughs> eyes, and I'm trying to like position it so it's not. Right in your own hands. Last one, guys. Chris, you know, there was, after the Brett Taya match, there was a lot of flack about mm -hmm. how that match went and people not wanting to see you guys in the ring. And mm -hmm. what do you say to the critics of the women's division in AEW? Uh, I'd say I'd like to see them get in the ring and try and do anything that we've done. Of course, not everyone's going to like everything. And not maybe not everyone works together, but it doesn't mean that it or not works together doesn't work well together. But not everyone has chemistry with everyone, and you know I I think it's unfair. A lot of what we see online is just based off of small clips, uh, not the whole match. You don't know what goes into putting a match together. You don't know what goes into having a match. You don't know what it goes into. Being a wrestler, all the stress that we have to deal with, all the criticism that we get online from people that don't know us, we don't know them, and we get online and people tell us to kill ourselves and that they hate us and that they they think we should get fired from a job that we love doing because maybe we didn't we had a bit of an off night. And I think I wish people would take into consideration that yes, we are we are on television, yes, we are wrestlers, we are superstars, if you will, but we're people. You know, if anyone, if any of you guys read a tweet online that said, this person's so bad at holding a phone right now, they should kill themselves. They should get fired for this. Like, how would you guys feel? It, it sucks and we have to always constantly go out there and put on a brave face. And because we're women, we're always see as less than. And, you know, people, there's always going to be so much more criticism because we'll never be good enough. But uh, we, so many of us, try so hard to prove that we do deserve just as much praise as the guys do because we really do we show up we work our butts off we train we try hard and we want to put on the best show that we can for all of our fans for everyone for the company and um it just really sucks that people that have never done anything that we have to do week after week all the traveling that we have to do it sucks that they can't just like wrestling for wrestling and that they think that they know better than we do and it's like if we have an off night like we know it we don't need the entire internet to tell us that we didn't have our best night so it i just really wish some people would take into consideration that we're doing our best um you know it, not everyone is top of the top and not everyone has their best night every night so it's just uh yeah I don't really know how to end that on a positive note because, but it's just like, yeah, it is what it is, you know? We understand it. We all know that we're going to get chewed out alive. Chewed up. Chewed alive. Chew, chewed up, spit out, eaten alive. I'll pick, pick one. Uh, we, all, we all know that it's coming. And, uh, you know, it sucks that we have that fear going on to TV being like, if we screw up this one thing or, man, I'm not feeling great, I'm a little nervous, you know, and we just... Uh, we know that people are gonna hate us for it, for just trying to do our jobs. So it's uh, it's quite unfortunate that we have to deal with that more than a lot of other people do. Thanks, Jim.